You've been working hard in the office for eight hours. You finally get home. What's the first thing you do? You turn on the lights, turn on the heat, take a shower and have tea. We can see that everything we do involves heating and power. But where does it all come from? More than 80% of our energy is still sourced from fossil fuels, processed in power plants and distributed to consumers. We know for a fact that major energy losses occur within the electricity generation process. So, how can we improve this? Let's consider combined heat and power, more specifically micro CHP. The idea of micro CHP is to generate electricity locally, so the excess heat can be utilized for water and space heating. A CHP has three basic components, a prime over which convert fuel into thermal and mechanical energy, a generator which convert mechanical energy into electricity and a heat recovery system which collect the heat produced. In this house, a micro CHP replaces the original boiler. Natural gas provides the energy demand of the house, whereby 20 to 25% of the energy is delivered as electricity, 65 to 70 as water or space heating, and 10 to 15 is lost as exhaust. At present, there are three major types of micro CHP. Firstly, internal combustion engines. These are characterized by constant heat and electrical output. The predominant fuel used is natural gas and it operates either by compression or spark ignition engine. Secondly, Stirling engine. The operation involves a moving piston encased within a cylinder, releasing mechanical energy due to pressure changes. It offers stable combustion, reduced maintenance and high selection of fuels. Lastly, there are the fuel cells. Electrochemical reactions create a difference in potential across the cell, enabling the flow of electrical current. Natural gas, methanol, or hydrogen can be used as a fuel. Microcogeneration units are readily available in developed countries. They offer more than 85% overall efficiency and are compatible with current household infrastructure. The tech is similar in size when compared to regular boiler and achieves comparable efficiency for fuel to heat conversion. However, much higher fuel to electricity efficiency is achieved compared to traditional power plants. The technology can be supported by government policies such as the UK feed-in tariff. Furthermore, a life cycle analysis indicates that the technology's low carbon emissions when compared to conventional power generation and its equivalent emissions compared to district heating boilers. But what about the long-term potential of micro CHPs? Well, a recent case study by the US Department of Energy analyzes the growth potential of micro CHPs specifically fuel cell-based technology. First, they ran simulation to determine the most feasible location for installation. Second, they conducted field trials in different buildings such as hospitals, schools, and hotels. The simulations considered the cost of electricity, fuel, and blackout risk across the United States. For a power generation technology to be cost-effective, it must be installed in a location with a high cost of electricity and a low cost of fuel. The field trial showcased that performance was best in buildings that require high speed heating and hot water demands, especially facilities that operate for 24 hours. While skylighting the promise within the US, globally, however, only Japan and Germany have significant installation rates of the technology. Overall, the case did stress that growth and advancement of fuel cell technology, in line with reducing material costs, would be pivotal over the next five years in determining micro CHP's role as an energy source. Our conclusion is that the technology remains promising, which we base on the great deal of research being done in the field. The major objectives are to reduce the high capital cost and address the poor awareness.